welcome friends today we will learn about uh, project a uh, scope management knowledge area from the pinbox 6 guide uh, which is the book for the pmp by the project management institute so as you can see that uh, in this top row we have different project management processes that are related with the scope management knowledge area so firstly we have plan scope management then we have collect requirements then we have defined scope then we have create wbs we have validate scope and control scope these first three uh, uh, management processes this plan scope management collect requirements and define scope these three belongs to the planning uh, process group and then this this uh, also this create wbs these all four these uh, belongs to the planning process group and validate scope and control scope this belongs to the monitoring and controlling process group similarly uh, the first column is we shows uh, here we have the inputs then we have the tools and techniques and then we have the outputs so basically we have arranged the ITTOs or inputs tools and techniques in a different fashion and we have color coded them so that you can easily understand uh, because you know different color has different memory so we have uh, coded the different boxes with a similar color color based on their similarity for example here we have the project charter so project charter is coded with this green uh, light green color similarly this project management plan with this light pink color so let us go uh, one by one through the inputs of all different project management processes uh, the focus to arrange uh, the purpose to arrange this uh, project management processes that are related to scope in this way is that so that you have the high level understanding of the different project management processes and by using different colors you can easily understand uh, one one more thing that I want to add here is that uh, the red color, this red color like business uh, business documents and the agreements. This red color shows that these are the critical, uh, like I would say that these are the critical uh, inputs or tools and techniques or outputs that you have to focus particularly uh, because when you uh, these are the questions most of the time you will be getting the questions from the uh, in the PMP exam and because they are the distinct for example business documents has a distinct input for the collect requirement similarly verified deliverable here verified deliverable this one is the uh, uh, distinct input for the validate scope other uh, another way to look at these uh, red color boxes is that these are not overlapping these are not overlapping in the other project management processes for example business documents only belongs to collect requirements it doesn't belong to define scope or create wbs however if you look at the project documents here this project documents is also the part of collect requirements uh, also the part of de defined scope also the part of create wbs so this is the basic introduction that how do we color coded these uh, different boxes so let us look at the inputs so in the uh, then the first process is plan scope management in plan scope management basically uh, first of all we need project charter we need project management plan we need enterprise environment factors and organizational process assets as an inputs so why do we need the, uh, these as inputs because we need to have these different project management documents in order to develop the scope management plan so why do we need project charter so let us look at the project charter because you know you can see here on the screen that project charter provides us the high level summary of the project it includes high level project budget it includes the high level information regarding the project schedule high level information regarding project stakeholders as well as high level risks similarly we have the project management plan this documents defines how the project will be executed monitored and controlled and closed so this is the input and this is the general input all across the different inputs areas as well similarly we require enterprise environmental factors as well as organization process assets and you may know that these enterprise environmental factors and organization process assets are the common inputs all to almost all of the project management processes in all different domains so here what are the specific project management processes that we are looking at we are looking at organizational culture infrastructure and personal administration things similarly uh, organizational process and assets uh, process assets we're looking at policies and procedures okay uh, let us look at the inputs of the collect requirements in the collect requirements uh, if you look at the collect requirements in collect requirements we first need project charter okay we need project management plan we need project documents we need business documents we need agreements and then furthermore we also need enterprise environmental factors and organization process assets similarly project charter and project management plan are the same inputs that are revised uh, that were there in the plan scope management 
the distinct input the new input here is project document so let us look at it what are the project documents that we require in the collect requirements so we need assumption log we need lessons learned register and we need stakeholder register then in the business documents particularly we are looking at the business case and agreements uh, tells us the different uh, contract types that we will be doing with the clients then sim similarly we have the enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets like we studied in the plan scope management similarly let us look at the defined scope in the defined scope we have the project charter project management plan these are the uh, and the project documents these are the same inputs that are there in clock requirements and what are the different here some documents will be different for example here we had assumptions log lessons learned register and stakeholder register here we had the assumption log requirements documentation and here we have the risk register instead uh, similarly if we look at the create wbs process here we have the project management plan and the project documents these are the same inputs uh, project documents we require here as the project scope statement and requirements documentation similarly enterprise environmental factors and organization process assets you can see further in the validate scope we have these all same inputs uh, the distinct inputs are verified deliverables these are the verified deliverables that we get from the control quality process and similarly we have the work performance data which we get from the execution process group lastly the input which is related to the control scope we have here project management plan project uh, project documents work performance data and organizational process assets these are almost the same inputs that are being repeated you can see them by the color uh, by the different color codes okay here we will finish the inputs now let us go at the tools and techniques so in plan scope management area okay uh, just look at it that expert judgment here excellent expert judgment here this this expert judgment is almost the same uh, same uh, input all across in the different areas right so expert judgment is we require we require expert judgment in plan scope management in collect requirements okay in uh, in defined scope okay we, we also require uh, expert judgment in creating the wbs so basically expert judgment is the sub uh, is the people uh, who are the subject matter experts on these different domains right so similarly we have the data analysis technique that is replicated in the different uh, project management processes and also this decision making techniques that is also here in uh, collect requirements as well as in defined scope as well as in the validate scope so so let us go through these uh, tools and techniques one by one in plan scope management we have first of all uh, expert judgment then we have the data analysis so what do we mean by data analysis actually uh, we have to review and assess all the different uh, documents that are related to the scope management okay then we have to do the lot of meetings in order to develop the scope management plan uh, coming to the collect requirements we require expert judgment uh, while while collecting the requirements we will also be doing the data analysis we will be reviewing the and assessing the different documents that we have collected as a result of our collect requirement process we will be gathering the data and we will how we will gather data we will gather data by using brainstorming interviews focus groups questionnaires and service and benchmarking process similarly we will be doing the decision making that how to reach the uh, conclusion so we will be using the different decision making techniques it may be voting it may be autocratic decision or it may be multi criteria decision, decision analysis similarly how we will represent the data uh, once we have collected the requirements we can represent this requirements in the form of affinity diagrams and mind mapping uh, we also require interpersonal and team skills and uh, interpersonal and team skills may entail nominal group techniques observation and conversation and facilitations furthermore one more um, uh, tool and technique in the collective requirement process is context diagram which is basically the visual depiction of the uh, visual depiction which is which shows the relationship of the business system product scope and how basically we can uh, say that context diagram shows how the different uh, uh, components of a system inter interact with each other for example here we have the product scope we have the business systems okay these are all how these different things interact with one another then we have the prototypes in prototypes prototype is also the method of obtaining early feedback okay relating related to the scope then we have the context diagrams okay we have already discussed we also discussed about the uh, uh, prototypes these are the different uh, tools and techniques that are required in the expert judgment process then coming towards the defined scope in defined scope process we have the expert judgment uh, which is of course in order to define the scope we need to have the expert subject matter experts that will 
define uh, that will help us to define how we will define the scope we will be doing the data analysis here as well which will be again reviewing and assessing the relevant documented information we will be doing the decision making and decision making can be done through voting autocratic decision making or multi-criteria decision analysis we also need interpersonal and team skills as well as we need to do the product analysis so this product analysis in the defined scope process is more important uh, uh, tool and technique because this is very unique so product analysis includes product breakdown structure requirements analysis and system analysis there are some other things that I didn't include here for example like value engineering uh, then coming towards the create WBS we also have expert judgment as well as decomposition so if you look at the decomposition decomposition is all about decomposing the decomposing the uh, work packages into the uh, uh, decomposing the project work into the smaller components like work packages which are easily easily measurable so what do we what do we do basically we subdivide the deliverables into the smaller uh, manageable packages known as work packages okay where we have the realistic estimates of cost uh, cost and schedule then coming towards the validate scope which is the monitoring and controlling process group uh, uh, we have the inspection we basically inspect the deliverable which we receive from the uh, which we will receive uh, from the execution process then also we have the decision making process okay and we also have to vote we can we, we can uh, we can do the to critic decision making you can also do the multi criteria decision analysis similarly in the control scope there is only one tool and technique which is the data analysis so these are the different tools and techniques that we have discussed here then looking at the outputs basically the output of plan scope management would be scope management plan and this is a component of project management plan that describes how the scope will be defined developed monitored and controlled and validated then we have the requirements management plan this is shows shown in red means this is also important most of the time uh, the people forget about the requirements management plan and it often appears in the PMP exam basically so how project and product requirements will be analyzed document documented and managed is included in the requirements management plan the outputs of the collect requirements are requirements documentation and requirements traceability matrix requirement documentations may include quality requirements project requirements solution requirements as well as business requirements and requirement traceability matrix is basically how you trace the uh, different products in the project okay so this is the typical requirement traceability matrix which is uh, uh, appearing on the screen uh, if we look at the create wbs the key output of the create wbs is scope baseline so what does scope baseline includes basically scope baseline includes a, a project scope statement we have wbs as a part of scope baseline which is the hierarchical decomposition of project uh, project work and then we have the wbs dictionary when we combine these things together we get the scope baseline similarly here some documents are updated like assumption log requirements documentation and requirement traceability matrix okay uh, moving towards the validate scope in validate scope we have the accepted deliverables which are approved by the customers or sponsors similarly we have the work performance information which is the information regarding the project progress there are some change requests if there are some change requests to be made uh, ch change requests are made here in the validate scope process and then we have the project document updates as well so what are the specific documents that are updated this is assumption log requirements documentation and requirements traceability matrix uh, if we go to the control scope the output is for work performance information change requests project management template updates for example scope schedule and cost baseline is updated here as a result of uh, uh, as a result we have the updated information available so we update scope schedule and cost baseline and then we have the project document updates so this was the brief summary of the entire uh, project scope management process in a very limited time I can understand that uh, this is a very brief but uh, uh, the purpose of this this video was to just to get the high level understanding of project scope management uh, knowledge area and its ITTOs thank you very much guys